Hey folks, today we're excited to announce the ability to create remote MCP servers for any API that you manage with Zooplo. This is going to allow you to take an API, whether it's one that you have already or one that you're about to create, and start exposing its endpoints as tools that can be used with any MCP compatible services. It's incredibly quick to get started and in this video we're going to walk you through it. To guide us along, I'd like to welcome John McBride, staff software engineer here at Zooplo and creator of this exciting new feature to show us how it all works. Alrighty, so what I want to show off is kind of the end-to-end -end experience of taking an API uh, on Zooplo, transforming it into an MCP remote server, um, and then we can actually show utilizing it uh, with, with some MCP capabilities. Uh, for people who are unaware, um, MCP is the model context protocol. Uh, this is a way developed by Anthropic uh, to have LLM agents um, have additional context, uh, get access to all different kinds of tools and resources uh, that those agents don't have to bake in, uh, that you don't actually have to build in all those tools and those code, um, and that you, with your APIs, can start enabling downstream uh, MCP clients and agents to start utilizing your services and doing things. So that's kind of where we're starting from. Uh, let's let's uh, build an empty project, or maybe let's do the to-do app. We'll call this John's demo. And this essentially will create a small API for us um, where we can go and use uh, a bunch of to-do things, get to-dos, post to-dos, delete to-dos, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I go into the code, what I want to do is actually add a new open API spec, and we'll call this um, mcp.oas. Dot JSON, and if I go in here in the route designer, let's uh, let's add a new route, and this is going to be on a slash MCP, um, and that will be the endpoint that MCP clients like Cursor or Cloud Desktop or OpenAI or any of these things can actually go and use to start utilizing this API. In the handler, what I want to add is the MCP server right here. Uh, which that is actually then going to transform this into an MCP remote server. Uh, now we'll notice uh, immediately that this has to be a post. Uh, so we'll transform that to a post. Now we have a few options here. Uh, let's call this John's to do API MCP server. Uh, this version is fine. Um, these are things that downstream MCP clients will actually consume to understand what this is, to know, you know what version of your MCP server this is. Um, and one thing to note, uh, kind of public PSA, uh, this is all moving extremely quickly. Uh, this community in MCP, even the protocol itself, uh, barely six months old. So we definitely want to keep in mind that a lot of this is moving extremely fast. So this, this version here, I would, I would say be pretty, uh, lenient with, with versioning it, uh, maybe keep it on patch versions. Um, you could even do something like, you know, beta one, whatever is supported, uh, by Semver. Uh, so then down here in the option for the open API files, it looks like it automatically selected my routes, uh, JSON, and that will then go and actually build, um, all of those routes on my JSON to MCP tools. Uh, let's build that real quick. I'll pop this open and that'll start building away. Um, while that's happening, I'm going to go over here to my routes so we can actually see what is on here. There's uh, get to do's there's create to do's. There's some other get routes with additional information. There's delete, and then there's update. Um, so what my MCP handler is doing is it's taking each of those um, from this file and transforming those into their own individual MCP tools that then exist on that MCP server, which is then hosted at slash MCP. So there's some layers of inception going on here, uh, but the way MCP works is that a single MCP server can have many tools. So those many tools uh, from our handler are being consumed from this routes JSON. And then I can head over to the MCP inspector. Now what this is, is a development tool that um, you utilizing MCP capabilities on Zoopla will find very useful as it enables you to kind of inspect and look at the kind of back and forth protocol in model context protocol that's that's happening you can understand what tools are being called how they're getting called um, and how the interactions with your server will actually work let's go over to the url here let's put in our zooplo url for that that we just deployed and then let's add slash mcp again as that is where the mcp server is being hosted now you want to make sure that you are on streamable http 
as that is the only protocol, or I guess the only transport that is supported uh, for the remote servers here on Zuplo. We're gonna go down here to connect. We hit connect and we see that it connected. If we go down in the history here, uh, this is what, where you're gonna find a lot of useful information. We could see that it started with a request to initialize and then it responded. And here we can see that server information that we set with John's to do API MCP server. So then at this point, we can actually come up here and list tools. I'll click that. And here it's actually listing a bunch of these tools. From here, we can actually run a tool. So run this, and this is gonna go and get a bunch of the to-dos from our sort of stub to-do app. Uh, we can add a to-do, let's do user ID one, two, three. I want to mow the lawn and we can complete it. And there it actually posts that to the to-do API. So again, I would point us to the history here, which is very important for understanding that back and forth communication in the actual protocol. If I open this one up here, I could see that tool call that I just made with the name, the arguments, and the actual method, which is tools call. And this is exactly how an MCP client would utilize this server uh, based on LLM tool calling uh, to go and utilize these, these functionalities in your API. Uh, from here, you can start to build out further features using Zuplo's powerful policies engine to pipe in things like API keys and authentication, rate limiting, all sorts of different kinds of things, um, as well as some special built policies for MCP that we've developed. Awesome, John, that's fantastic. And so as you can see, uh, it is super quick to get a remote MCP server up and running uh, inside of Zuplo based on an API that you either have in place already or one that you decide you want to have as an MCP server, you can go and get that set up today. Remote MCP server support is available right now uh, on all of the plans. So you can go ahead and try it out right now if you want to. Uh, and we also have, as John mentioned, a couple of new policies that are coming to Zuplo that attach themselves very nicely to working with MCP servers, such as prompt poisoning protection and secrets masking. And we're going to be doing more videos on those coming up later this week. It's MCP week all week here at Zuplo, so do stick around and get subscribed to the channel uh, if you want to watch more of the content that we're going to be putting out. And of course, uh, let us know uh, how you find this and what you're building with it, because we would love your feedback. John, thank you very much for walking us through it. Much appreciated. Hey, thanks, Martin. Hope you have a good one. Happy MCP week. Happy MCP week, everybody.